everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Anybody listening in tonight who doesn't get the sleep he needs? All right, here's a suggestion. Just before you go to bed, drink a glass full of Horlicks malted milk. Hot. Here's what it does. It soothes you and relaxes you despite yourself. You just can't help falling off to sleep easily and naturally. Once asleep, Horlicks helps you sleep soundly. You wake up in the morning feeling rested and refreshed. Fit as a fiddle. Try it tonight, folks. You'll never regret it. Don't forget the glass full of Horlicks malted milk hot just before going to bed. Tonight, you can get Horlicks at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When we left Lum and Abner last week, the old fellows were getting their circus ready for the grand opening, which was to have been held Saturday. Well, Squire Skimp, who has been employed as manager because of his previous circus experience, predicted a record-breaking crowd for their opening. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum down at the Jotham Down store talking to Grandpappy Spears. Listen. Well, when you run out of stuff that way, Grand Beth, you want to call a golf wholesale grocery house in there at the county seat and tell them to send it out to you. Well, the only trouble, they, they don't sell on a credit, Mom. Well, I don't want you to buy stuff on a credit. I want to stay on a cash base, of course. That way, I can always tell where I'm at. That is, I tell where I'm at financially. Well, how do you expect me to pay cash for stuff when you keep taking all the money out of the cash drawer there as fast as we get it in? Come over here Friday and clean it out, and, and Saturday you done the same thing. Well, I had to take that money uh, them days, Grandpa, to buy some stuff for the circus. Had to pay for that steam Kelly Oak Squire skimp boat first, and some hand bills and one thing or another. Well, of course, it ain't none of my business, Mom. This is your store. I'm just running it for you, but I can tell you right now, you can't expect this store to keep itself up in the circus, too. Yeah, I know it. I don't know what to do. Looks like I've got myself into it now, and I can't get out. Now, Cedric was telling me you never done very well Saturday over there on your opening. No, no, we lost money. Tell you the truth, Van Bapp, I don't believe Squire Skimps is as good a circus man as he lets on to be in. Well, I thought the show was all right. Me and Charity went down there Saturday night. We enjoyed it something wonderful. Wait a minute, here comes Abner. We're going to have a sort of a meeting over here this morning. I called Squire Skimp while I go and told him to come over, too. Uh, Abner backed out on going in the cage with them lions over there, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can hardly get him to walk by the cage anymore now. All he's doing now is just taking up tickets at the door there. Yeah, howdy, Abner. Yeah, good morning, man. Good morning. Come in, Abner. Come in. Yeah, Squire Skimp hollered at me when I passed his place just now, Lum, and said that he'd be over here directly. Yeah, I called him a while ago. We're going to have a circus meeting over here. Circus meeting? Well, a uh, meeting of the owners and the uh, manager of the circus. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant we were going to have the animals over here, too. No, no, just me and you and Squire got to sit down and figure some things out. I guess there's something wrong here. Something wrong? Yeah, that grand opening we had, Sad, did come right now be in a grand pose. Yeah. Hey, you fellas wants to talk business. I'll go back here and straighten up the feed room. I get up here to watch the front line. Yeah, all right, Grandpa. Now, Lum, you ain't blaming me because we never done no business that Saturday, are you? Oh, no. No, no. Well, I know I've taken up every ticket that they brought in there. Yeah, by the way, that's another thing I want to ask you about. You never had no extra tickets in your pocket, did you? Extra tickets? Yeah. I know, I reckon not. The only ones I had was them I'd taken up at the gate when folks walked in. Well, you made a mistake there summer. You turned in too many tickets to me. I did, huh? Oh, yeah. Yesterday, I never had nothing to do, so I was sort of checking up on the money I'd taken in at the box office and checking out again them tickets you'd taken up at the door. And uh-huh. You turned in 44 adult tickets and 26 children. And that way, I ought to had $28 and a half, according to my account. Yeah. And I ain't got but $22 and a half. Well, I do know. Reckon you could have dropped some tickets there in the sawdust when you was taking them up or... No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, no. You never found no tickets in the sawdust, did you? Why, no, I never even know there's any there. Well, I don't know whether there's any there or not. You're long on your tickets, though, I know that. 
You turned in too many of them to me. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Just looks like I can't do nothing right no more. I get so disgusted with myself sometimes, I just can't hardly stand me. Did anybody hand you two tickets when they walked in the door there? Two tickets? Yeah, I figured maybe that's how coming to be long. Well, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, they sure did. Oh, Uncle Henry Lunsford. Well, I'll be dead blame. I never would have thought it of him. Uncle Henry Lunsford? Yeah, I know get there the fellow we're looking for right there, long. And him a deacon in the church, too. He's a wolf in snake's clothing, or I mean a sheep in the grass. That's well, what I Abner, mean. Uncle Henry was supposed to have two tickets. I sold him two. Oh, you, you charged him double price, huh? No, there was two of him. Two of him? Well, I mean, there was him and his wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, that kid was with him, yeah. Well, that's what I say. He had two, had to have two tickets. One of them was for him and one of them was for her. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I thought if that old skin flint put anything over on me, I'd swim that river to go over there and give him a licking. Well, I don't believe it was Uncle Henry. Now that we've got to talking about it, the mistake might have been in the box office. You mean that you might have made a mistake? No, of course not. Oh. I just happen to think, though. I've heard all my life that circuses is awful bad about shortchanging folks. Yeah. I'd forgot about that. That's just about what happened. Some fellow come up there to buy some tickets and hand me a big bill, and then when he went to hand me the change, but... No, oh, wait a minute. I'm that good idea. Now, it must have been in your tickets, have not it? Well, I'm just as sorry as I can be, Lum. I'll watch you from here out and try not to take up no more than you sell out there. Or, yeah, yeah. Well, that just accounts for $6, but we lost $40 Saturday. Lost $40? Yes, sir. I figured it up yesterday. $40 is what we lost on the day. We lost? Now, here, now, wait a minute now, Long. You were the one that had all the cash money. You can't lay that off on me now. I ain't blaming you with it. Squire's the one to blame, if anybody. What, did you let him carry the money? Why, no, didn't nobody carry it. We didn't have it. Well, how in the world are we going to lose $40 if we never had it? Abner, when I say we lost $40, I don't mean anybody in particular lost it. I mean that uh, me and you, as owners of the circus, lost $40 Saturday. $20 apiece. Yeah. I don't know what you done, course, Tom, but I know that blame good and well that I never lost nothing. Yeah, you did, whether you know it or not. Well, all right. I don't want to argue about it, but uh, I never had but $9 in my pocket Saturday, and I don't see how I could have did it. Well, I don't mean that you lost the cash, Abner. I mean we lost $40 on paper. On paper? Well, we went in the whole $40. Our expenses run $62 and a half a day, and we never taken in but $22 and a half. Oh, we lost $40. Oh, oh, yeah, I believe I'm catching on now, Lon. Hey, yeah, I see. Come back here a minute. I want to ask you about something. And yeah, Grandpa's calling back there, Yeah, all right, Grandpa. What is it you want? $40. Well, <laughs> I never even knew we had that, Ma. <laughs> well, howdy, Cedric. Good morning, Mr. Abner. What about you, Mr. Lomax? Why, he just stepped back there in the feed room. What is it you want to see him about? I want to see if he'd let me have a quarter. <laughs> I want to have my picture too. Your picture, though. Yes, Mom. The uh, fellow joined up with the circus down there and takes your picture for a quarter. I didn't <laughs> Me and Clarabelle Seastump's going to have a picture took together. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't believe I'd speak to Lom about it now, Cedric. He ain't in a very good humor with himself. We lost $40 Saturday in the circus. I never know that. Well, yeah, I never neither, but Gardner Lom still of it, we did. He figured them things out some way with figures. I lost $20 myself, he claimed. Well, I'll, I'll look around over there. Maybe I can find it for you. Might have got down in that sort of it. No, I, I don't know just how it is, Cedric. Well, I'm explaining it to me, but we, we lost it, and then again we didn't lose it somewhere or other. I don't know. Well, maybe he lost it and then found it again. No, he said we never had it to lose. <laughs> if you never had it, I don't see how you could have lost it, partner. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just what I said, too, Cedric. I believe Lom just mixed up on his figure there somewhere. I don't see how fellas lose. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. There, there comes Squire Stinson. I don't say nothing to him about it. He'll be trying to find it himself. Lom says it is his fault for us losing it, too. Hey, Lom, here comes Squire. Howdy, Mr. Squire. Well, hello, Cedric. Good morning, Abner. Morning, Squire. Well, howdy, Squire. Oh, hello, Lom. Uh, you say you want to have a meeting this morning? Yeah, we've got to figure something out here, Squire. We're losing money on this circuit. Yes, well, now that ain't hard to explain, Lum. Uh, we never done no business Saturday, but uh, I know the reason for that. 
you see, that circus was in town here for a week before you fellas took it over. And then uh, we let folks in there for a feed, you know, for the animals a couple of days. Where the everybody in Pine Ridge here has done seen the circus. Yeah, that's right. Now, what we've got to do, men, is to move to another location. Start out on the road with it. I'd like to open up the county seat for the middle of the week, and I believe we can do a big business in there. Yeah, some place where they ain't saw it yet. Yeah, in order to do good in there at the county seat. Now, the only thing, men, uh, before we can move the circus off of that lot over there, we've got to have something to move it with. And that's going to take money. Money? Yes, we can't move a foot till we get some money. And it's just a dead expense while it's there. Them animals, you know, is eating right along, and all the performers there have to be paid. More money. <laughs> Who got us into this circus business in the first place? Huh? <laughs> Well, you've heard of having a white elephant on your hand. Well, Lum and Abner have a whole circus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just recently a test was conducted in several Chicago schools on Horlick's malted milk tablets. One of the teachers described it to Mrs. E.F.K. of Chicago in a note. She's telling her husband about it now. Let's listen. Oh, Lef, I forgot to tell you something. What? I had a note from Tommy Teacher this morning. Not behind again, is he? <laughs> no, not this time. It's about a test she conducted on Horlick's malted milk tablet. Yeah? What sort of test? Well, she wanted to prove that they're a good thing for youngsters to eat between meals. Nourishing. And did she? I'll say she did. Listen to this. First, she gave the children ice cream and cookies an hour before lunch. <laughs> what happened? Well, it ruined their appetite for lunch. I'm <laughs> not surprised. <laughs> Neither am I. Well, for the next few days, she tried giving the youngsters nothing at all in the morning. What happened then? They became restless and fidgety, she says, around 11.30. Paid no attention to what she was saying. Got hungry, I suppose. And that was it. Well, then she tried giving Horlick's malted milk tablets to the youngsters at the same time in the morning. And that worked the trick, eh? That's what she says, Les. Let me read a letter to you. Listen. When we gave Horlick's tablets to the youngsters, she says, we found three things. First, they were well behaved right up to lunchtime. They forgot to figure it seems. Yeah. Second, their appetites were good. They ate every bit of their luncheon. Mm. Third, on the days we gave them the tablets, they were most alert. Well, she ought to know. Get a package for Tommy and we'll see how they go. And that's a good idea, folks. As the test showed, the Horlick's tablets are fine for giving to youngsters between meals. They provide energy and nourishment without spoiling appetite. Get a package from your favorite druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Then, give them to those youngsters of yours to eat between meals. You'll find they like them better than candy. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Harley, who now bid you all good night and good health.